What's up, everybody? Uh, I don't usually endorse episodes like this, but we just had an absolutely fantastic episode with Fahim Anwar, otherwise known as Frankie Ant. Um, it was really one of my favorite uh, guest episodes I've ever done, if not favorite. You're going to love it. It really was a lot of fun. So stick around and watch that. But first, I'm in San Diego this weekend. Stamford, Connecticut next, March 1st and 2nd. The Vic Theater in Chicago, March 8th. One night, one show. Denver, March 14th through the 16th. Toronto show added, March 23rd. Cleveland, March 29th and 30th. Tulsa, April 4th. Uh, April 5th and 6th, Kansas City, Missouri, April 11th through 13th. Then I am in Los Angeles, May 2nd at the Netflix is a Joke Festival and the Rowley Improv in North Carolina, May 17th and 18th, and also other dates um, on my website, GiannisPappasComedy.com. Join our Patreon. The reviews of our episodes, people love them. Ask other fans. Patreon.com slash Hour. Thank you for being a fan of this show. We appreciate you so much. Please, please, please stick around to enjoy this fun episode. What's up, everybody? Welcome to another, I should say, cherishable. This is going to be a cherishable episode because we're here with the very funny Fahim Anwar. Thank you. Glad Again. to be back. Thank you. Two two Wow. Yeah. I mean, this. Are you the only repeat guest? I don't know. That's up to you to know. Not me. I think How do you I know? are. Holy shit. I think I'm you honored. Are. I think you are. Because sometimes I feel bad when I'm trying to promote a thing and it's like the second time. I'm like, do you want to drive me to the airport twice? Yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, I already cashed in the favor on the last special. And yeah. when I'm like, hey, can I have another one? Well, this is my way of saying I think the invasion of Afghanistan was a mistake. <laughs> <laughs> you know, as an ambassador of the people, we forgive you. Yeah. 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 Just, that's a good trade off. The <laughs> 20 years boss job in Afghanistan and then promoting my special on Giannis's podcast that's a trade hey listen innocent afghani people did I, did we make good <laughs> we had fun i'm so sorry yeah <laughs> direct your anger emails <laughs> direct them here of course no it's good to have you back thank you man um, glad to be back thank you for making the trek out here all, he, you flew all the way for this just for this that's what you told he, me yes yeah. I go, I'm coming to New York. I only want to do this. Yeah. I'm going to do nothing else. I'm going to stay in my hotel, stare at a wall. Yeah, you said I want the smallest of the ones in New York. <laughs> <laughs> no, you're up there, dude. I'm doing okay. Yeah, it's doing right. good. I'm, I'll tell you, uh, I mean, this is one of the bigger ones I've done since since I've been out here. Wow, you must be doing some smallies. <laughs> I, I did some smallies. Yeah. I do them all. Man. I'm like Lil Wayne, man. I'll feature on any track. No ego about this. Just trying to get the word out. You'll throw, you'll throw, a, you'll throw a verse on anything. Yeah, a little scissor in me. I'll I'll hop on any pod. What generation are you? Millennial, I guess. I'm 39, so I'm like an older oh, millennial. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. What if I'm like, Z? <laughs> <laughs> Isn't it obvious? <laughs> yeah, the Zs don't care about anything, right? They're kind of like, they're, they're kind of, uh, they're like anarchists. Yeah. They, I, they grew up in a world like COVID, war, content. They're all nihilistic. Yeah, they're they? just nihilists. They're like, whatever, man, I'll be whoever you want. I'm going to tattoo my face to get attention, That's whatever cool. it takes. Yeah. Yeah. At least my generation knew, keep it beneath the clothing lines, you know? Yeah. But Gen Z is like, nah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to go all the way up. Yeah, Gen Z is strictly growing up in an OnlyFans kind of yes. world. Where like a sh oh, here's a I thought I always had, like, they live in a shameless society. Yes. They never grew up with shame. Like, right. if you have an OnlyFans and you put, like, cucumbers in your pussy on your bed and you generate a lot of income, that's fantastic. Yes, queen. <laughs> like, there's no... There's nothing, you know what I mean? It's content, content, content. Content, content. Yeah. Mom, wait, you making, you, you making dinner? Hold up. Let me get my camera. <laughs> right. You're a character right. in my story. Yeah. Yeah, that is interesting. And you know what's crazy is they say... I read an article that they, they say that uh, I think Gen Z... And the generations following are going to live like 125 years. Yeah, that's a lot of content. <laughs> <laughs> that's a lot Nailed of it. content. <laughs> <laughs> they're going to be like 80 years old. Just like, 
Hola. Like, oh my God. Imagine having to work in the nursing home in the fucking future. Oh like, take God. your meds. Like, hold on, hold on, hold on, record me. <laughs> hey guys, uh, I'm about to die. Uh, I'm just doing a tutorial. POV, what it's like when you're about to die. We're going to have, we're going to have elderly influencers. Yeah. Who are they influencing? They're all gone. Yeah. Right there. Who are they talking to? Yeah. yeah. That's going to be really when the depression sets in for Gen Z. Bro. When they have no audience left to consume their content. When they're like, when Gen Z and stuff gets really, really old and they're in homes and shit and they're like their families are kind of losing their minds, they have to just like humor grandpa like, all right, this is going out to your followers, grandpa. <laughs> yeah, yeah, okay. Oh, yeah, do do the dance. Okay, all right, do the little sketches. There, it's uploading. It's like, oh, how, how many likes is that? It has a lot of likes. Oh, yeah. Uh, how's my merch? Your merch is great. <laughs> Self-esteem really did... Uh, become likes and how much attention you're getting. People really do base their self-esteem on that. I think maybe that is why suicides are up. I believe, no, you're joking, but I agree, dude. Like, <laughs> look, I'm, I, I'm, I, I, yeah. I'm an adult. Yeah. You're an adult. We work in stand-up comedy and like, uh, part of our jobs are cutting clips and putting them on Instagram and the algorithms change. They shift like month to month and sometimes you'll be feeling you're, you're used to getting a certain number of likes and that's your barometer for like how well you're doing and and then there might be an algorithm shift and like the ceiling is much lower and you don't know this off the bat. The, the algorithm is shifting. You're like, do people not like my stuff? Blah, blah, blah. What's going on here? Yeah. And like I can parse it out. I can rationalize it because I, I'm an older person. Yeah. But if you're fucking 12, I don't know if you have the skill set. You just see, you equate likes with validation, and then you're at high school, and people make fun. You're not, like, when you're young, you don't think, like, oh, that's going to hurt someone's feelings, and that's a, they might be going through something. Yeah. So it's just, like, pure chaos. It's a lot of shit. Yeah, they, it's almost like they intentionally crash people's confidence in order to keep them at the casino. Because you, you know when you start winning too much at yeah. the casino? And they're like, hey, uh, they cut you off. Like, would you like a breakfast? They we'll get you, they want you off the table if you're on a hot streak because you're winning yes. too much. It's almost like they do that when your algorithm gets too hot. They're like, no, 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 this isn't about you winning. Mm -hmm. This is about we want you to stay at the casino. How do you like to pay a little money to get that feeling again? Yeah. <laughs> that felt pretty good, huh? Yeah. How about gonna, Facebook ads? Yeah, how about boosting it a little bit? Boost. And we do it. Yeah, it's so funny. Like, I'll, You'll post a picture of like you and your mom or something and they're like want to boost this post <laughs> you know what i mean they have like zero discretion as to like what i might want boosted yeah like maybe a stand-up clip all right yeah. but it's like me and my brother or something <laughs> at dinner it's like one of that would be funny if i sunk like three or like 10 grand into a, a picture of me and my brother at like a steakhouse <laughs> like, like why is this why am i seeing this everywhere <laughs> I'm like, oh, I juiced the fuck out of that post, dude. It, it did well. And Instagram said I should juice it. It yeah. did well. I don't even have my dates or anything. No, it's just you I'm and not brother. I don't, I'm not promoting anything. It's just me and my brother. And we just have Tomahawk steaks. Yeah. Sponsored post. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, <laughs> it's almost worth it for the mind fuck. It's like, why is this sponsored? Yeah. <laughs> That could be like the anti-content content. Is if someone start that's going to come soon, where people just start sarcastically, ironically. I, I, can't, I can't wait for dude, that to come. Instagram hipsters are coming, where they're going to ironically post shit like that. Like it's just me sitting here, going like, "Don't watch this, don't watch this," <laughs> and people are like going to watch it, or or like you're promoting your special and shit, and then when you click on the hyperlink, it's just you on a stage, not saying anything for an hour, but it's like nine different cameras and there's an audience yeah. and everything. <laughs> And it's literally an hour. Yeah. That would be a great fuck you. It would. It would. And uh, it's coming, I think. I think there's, that's the only thing left after this. Yeah. I think the algorithm has hyped every type of content a little bit. And I think we, at some point you go into hating on it. At right. some point you go into like, fuck this. And some sort of commentary on yeah. what has been. Yeah. Sort of like, hey, this sucks. Yeah. And then the people who say it sucks get incentivized to say it sucks because they get popular and then that becomes a thing and then people say that sucks and it goes back to just like the shittiest low browest and it's just the cycle it's a circle man it's, it's a, a circle, circle jerk of entertaining ourselves because we're bored as fuck here nobody's got a real job anymore we're well, not that, building anything yeah we're just we're eating hours out of people's work days pretty much that's it it's an attention economy it's really only fans or a podcast or clips and if you can't make those um coal mine Coal mine is back, 
And that's only if Trump gets in office. <laughs> <laughs> He's bringing coal back. If Biden comes in office, it's just going to be teaching tr- trans kids to be safe. But that, that's a good lesson. Though. That's I a good mean, lesson. Yeah, they, they should that, be safe. I think they should be safe. And should I think that that could be a huge market. Right. As the trans population grows, which it is increasingly growing. It's exploding. It's a massive article that just came out where they're trying to purport. They did a study, research, and they said that they did the research and they said that the trans movement is not growing, particularly with male to female, uh, particularly with female to male, which I didn't know. He, so there's not because a lot. Of, not there's the, not a lot of female to male. Uh, there is. I think there's more of everything. Mm-hmm. But the real shoot up in this research article that was like a science study, uh, which is not being well received, as you can no, as right, you could yeah. maybe understand, as you guess, was uh, teenage female to male. And I had no idea that was happening because I've never checked that porn. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so it's like invisible to me. Yeah. Yeah. So that's growing, and they're saying that that's growing, they think, because of social contagion and other factors, but not innate transgenderism, but more gender dysmorphia due to societal pressure. That's what they were theorizing. Interesting. And they were saying they did it. I don't know what the factors were in the study, but I know it wasn't well-received. Sure. Yeah. I know it wasn't where we're sitting. It's like science is sort of like bits. You're like, eh, this study's not going to go over well. That's not going to go over I can't well. open with this study. Yeah. We're going to, like, I tried this study. People didn't like it. Yeah. <laughs> well, there was also this, it's interesting because this happens once in a while on the other side too. Because those people, like on the left, they always go like, aren't you pro-science? Like, uh, every, like unquestioned. Like, you, you guys are anti-science. Scientists are always right. They have that right. perspective. But then there was this economist. Like, this guy was a genius. This guy was... Uh, he was, uh, I think he was like the chair of his department of economics in Harvard, a black guy. Mm-hmm. He was a black guy. He admitted he did the study um, thinking that he was going to find um, that the police showed massive bias. His name was Fryer, massive bias in police shootings, and he didn't find it. And he talks about how thorough his, um, his research was. He did it twice because he was so shocked by the finding. And he said, I just... I published it. He said the first reaction he got from an email from another faculty member was like, this is bullshit. He said it's like a 3,500 page or a 1,500 page study. That's a lot of bullshit. And he goes, my first dude. reaction was when this guy emailed me in four minutes, he goes, wow, you can read fast. Because uh, yeah. the guy wrote like, this is bullshit, don't publish it. And so it's like some, the thing about science, uh, sometimes it's wrong and that's inconvenient. Sometimes it's right, it's inconvenient. But it's interesting when people don't like the scientific method, because the scientific method is to continue to question. Yeah. But we don't like it if it doesn't give us the answer that we like. Well, wait, who, who discovered the Earth was round? Um, I thought it was Christopher Columbus. That's what I was told <laughs> at my white supremacist school. <laughs> at my Italian-only school. <laughs> um, it was, uh, yeah, it was um, Galileo. And they want to kill him? No, Yeah, no, they did. Well, they essentially, well, he, no, what he came up with was um, that the Earth... That oh, the well, sun revolved the, around the yeah, earth, yeah, that yeah, yeah. not everything revolved around the... And it was just that. I mean, you feel like the church could work with that. But they were like, nah, and they nah, put... we don't him, like this. No, nah, like, nah, 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 nah. man is the image of God, and shit revolves around us, dog. And so they put him in a... Um, what did they do? They they exiled him and put him in prison or whatever, and he died in prison. That sucks, Galileo, man. yeah. They do this huge breakthrough, and they're like, enjoy prison. Yeah. it's A lot of this stuff just meets resistance. Like, even this guy... Um, um, Bessel, who uh, is talking about how much of mental health problems is trauma based, he's he's uh, it's it's caused a revolution in mental health, but he's faced a lot of resistance from traditional pharmacological, you know, uh, that industry and sort of the um, establishment. Yeah, the well, you know, you think people get used to making money in a certain way. That's true. The I church know. gets used to making money a certain way. The pharmaceutical industry gets used to making money a certain way. You're sad. You got low. You got low serotonin. Take a pill. Right. There's You're, a pill for everything, man. Yeah, pill, yeah. They get used to making money a certain way. I understand. You can't just disrupt that. You can't yes. just come along and yeah. disrupt that. It's going to be a little bit of a bumpy road. And shame on you for trying. And there's a culture of uh, like therapy, which is great. You know, like I'm not knocking. It's great for some people, but I mean, there's such a push. With like you know going to therapy and then like there's also been like prescribed for all the problems, where sometimes maybe just like having systems or people you talk to and I don't know some some issues are real and you need medication and shit. But sometimes, but sometimes people are very quick to prescribe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're very they're very quick to pre- prescribe. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's been sort of the 
that's been sort of the uh, the common thinking in that field is mm. that you know we had this pharma pharmacological. Am I pronouncing that right? Pharma Pharma-log- pharmacolog. I think so. Right. Pharmacological. Whatever. Yeah, pharmacological or pharmacological something. We had a we had a drug revolution, <laughs> and they just that was the common thought was like this is a chemical problem and we fix it chemically. Yeah. And then an industry sprang up and drugs are very helpful. They can be life-saving and stuff. But now I think they're finding that those things aren't as true as they thought because they did studies and they found out that even people who say they're depressed, they check their serotonin levels. And for a lot of them, the serotonin levels are fine. And and sometimes they say even taking the drugs lowers the serotonin levels. Mm. So it's an interesting thing. So that's where this trauma thing is coming up. And they're saying, hey, he was a neglected kid. Right. You know? Well, there's commercials on TV. Try this, blah, blah, blah. We're really built for consumption. Like, we just, we're pill heads. America's pill heads. Yeah. Yeah. You almost can't blame, like, the the opioid uh, addicts. It's like, they're pill heads, too. What's the difference if I'm prescribed it or not? And you know, like psychiatrists now, they don't even do therapy. They're just like, what do you need? Well, you can do on Zoom. Yeah, like, you just go on This is what's going on. I go, okay, yeah. here. I, go, I, I put it into your pharmacy. <laughs> yeah. what, is, what is it? I don't know. Yeah, I'm just feeling a <laughs> just little. Just take it. Yeah, I need something to relax me. What do you got? Uh, something, something. Everyone always wants something, something like Xanax. And they're like, oh, oh, right. they don't give Xanax now because really? it's so addictive. Yeah. They, uh, won't, they, they, they try to. So resist. Xanax is for what? Xanax is just to fucking chill you out. Chill you out. I mean, it's like. What, what is it primarily prescribed for? Anxiety. Okay. Yeah. So Xanax is really like, yeah. And, and supposedly, I've never taken a Xanax. I've taken a Klonopin, not many. But supposedly Xanax is, people love it. I people mean, I, you hear Xanax. about it all the time, yeah. right? Yeah. Like, especially in rap and shit. So yeah. it's it's a nice name brand, I suppose. They like Xanax. It, it's got a good name to it. Zanny. It. Yeah. It's just, like, give me, I need a Zanny. So it just makes you chill out? Yeah. Um, it makes you chill out. But it's highly addictive, so they really won't give it to you. Um when I had when I had COVID and I was like having an absolute anxiety attack, I was like, "Please, God, just give me a Xanax," <laughs> and they wouldn't give me. They gave me an Ativan, so it's a, Ativan is like an iteration. It's like, of a, it's like a royal crown instead yeah. of. You want a Coca Cola? And they go, "We have a. <laughs> we got RC. We have RC Cola. <laughs> yeah, yo, that'd be great. It could be at a restaurant. You go. Uh, you know, you want to drink? Like, I'll have a Coke. Yeah. Is RC Cola okay? Like, not even Pepsi. You go, yeah. yo, how far down the cola list yeah. are we going? I get you want to support small, but I mean, Jesus, uh, RC? is RC Cola okay? How, how does RC stay open? Are they still around? I think they're still doing Good it. Good for them, man. I was surprised to find out that sneakers like Brooks and Atonics, and they're still around. Yeah. Yo, that's they got- yo, I have a feeling Brooks could come back. You know, I thought it was done for Cheetah or, or, uh, or no, Champion. Champion, Champion was cool when I was a kid, and then it was like, who gives a fuck? Yeah. And then Champion had this huge resurgence. Yeah. Cha- I think I think people like hoisting these brands that were not cool and making them cool. It goes yeah. back to that ironic young thing. Yeah. I remember when um the guy who used to be partners with Jay Z and Rockefeller he tried to bring Dame back Dash. Dave Nash tried to bring back uh, Pro Cats. Didn't work though. He tried though. Were Sh- British Knights cool for a bit? They were cool for a bit. Yeah. Champion had that moment when it was not cool and then became cool. It had that moment where you could simultaneously see a guy, a homeless guy outside of a 7-Eleven smoking a Newport wearing Champion or like a famous rapper. That should have been their commercial. Yeah. Just, and they go, Champion, bringing the world together. And it's like a homeless guy pink his pants smoking and Champion sweatpants and then like a a hype beast Gen Z ear vaping. And then they're like, they give each other a pound. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's champion. They do a fist bump. <laughs> <laughs> See, there's no wage cap in our country. Champion. Bringing champion. the middle class back. We clothe everyone. <laughs> <laughs> that would be a great tagline. We clothe everyone. We clothe everyone. Yeah, from the lowest to the highest. The highest culture to the lowest culture. Be a champ. Be a champ and champion. What's your favorite soda? Do you do soda? I try to do seltzer water with a twist of lime <laughs> to trick myself into that soda feel. I do that with like a topo. What's a topo? Oh, yeah, topo, like chocolate, chocolate, chocolate topo? A, to- a topo chico. Topo chico, topo- yeah. It's like battery acid. Yeah. Like no one, no other <laughs> carbonated water has that burn. You're right. It does Topo burn. is, it's, yeah, yeah, it's battery acid. Also, I don't know what's going on with topo because... I used to try this bit, try to do it where I'm like, LaCroix 
You open it, it's good. You have like three minutes after you open LaCroix for it to be good. Yeah. You, it's out for five minutes. It's like puddle water. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. I go, Topo Chico, you can open it, come back to it in two weeks. Yeah. It burns just as much as yeah. when you first opened it. What did they put in there? Like, Dude. I feel like there's going to be a class action lawsuit. Like, did you drink Tomo Gino <laughs> between the years yeah. of 2000, 2010? They got me the money I deserve. <laughs> you know, like how how is how is that water burned that much after two weeks being just like let out? It does have a, a aftertaste burn. Yeah. It has a burn, but also normally carbonated drinks they they become tap water if you leave them out long enough. But Topo remains <laughs> battery acid for. Forever. I think it's isn't it from Texas, right? I, I think believe so. Yeah, so you know, there's something in there that isn't environmentally friendly. That's a good because they because yeah. they don't have the laws. Yeah, they just are fine with it. They're like whatever they throw no. in there. It's like real gas. Yeah, they go. It's good for business. It helps our gas guys out yeah. locally. <laughs> yeah. If it, oh, if it's it owned by Coca Cola. Oh. Yeah. Well, I remember when it was like a Texas thing first, and then they were kind of proud. They're like, you know, Coca Cola just bought it, so. Yeah. Yeah. It's like a band that got signed to a big label or yeah. something. <laughs> they go, you know, Coca Cola just bought Topo Chico. Like yeah. these, these people are really proud of Topo Chico. It's spreading now. It's spreading now. I got one in Florida the other day. Oh, I got shit. one in Atlanta. Yeah. Pretty nice. Yeah. Once they went to plastic bottles, I'm like, oh shit. They're yeah. on the come up. Then now they're doing mass production. Yeah, mass Did they do cans yet or no? I haven't seen a can. Yeah. Glass bottles still go. the best. Yeah. And right here. Oh, Holy there they go. shit. Coca-Cola. Our boy's doing it. <laughs> I feel like he's a rapper who made it out. Like yeah. our boy Topo. <laughs> Topo's doing it. Yeah, they Bring did us it. up with you, Topo. <laughs> but these are like are, are these just water or are they the spiked ones? Like it's alcohol. Oh, uh, that's blueberry. Oh, they're just like hibiscus flavored. Hibiscus extract. Because they have the the alcohol ones now, right? Oh, they Where do. they're just doing like hype, like truly shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Topo is is on the come up. Topo's on the come up. Yeah, dude. maybe they'll get truly stat. Truly dominated. Is that the that best market. one right now? Because White Claw was the first. Yeah, truly, dude. I always out. thought this. White Claw started becoming a thing, you know, very trendy. And when I was coming up, probably when you were too, like when you were younger, Zima had a Zima. moment. Everyone was loving Zima, and then. You got called gay. Yeah. <laughs> That's what you got it. called gay if you drank a Zima. Like you weren't a real man. Yeah. So, so then people stopped drinking Zima. Like Zima went away because of that. But Zima I swear to God. Yeah. It was like the rollerblading of drinks. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then and then enough time passed where like White Claw came out and everyone is just so sexually progressive nowadays. Yeah. yeah. That that if someone called you gay, they're like, Yeah, maybe, maybe I am. Yeah. So White Claw was able to thrive. Yeah. So Zima, Zima like Zima was the like the Jackie Robinson. Yes, of it was drinks. ahead of its time. Yeah, it was like the milk. It was like snow. Yeah, like you know, informer. Yeah, <laughs> like yeah. there's no M M&M and M without snow. Oh, no, like the vanilla ice. Yeah, like you and need that first guy. Yeah, and then that was really audacious. To do I think like white Rastafari. guys rapping was <laughs> look because we grew up we we're Gen X so okay. let me tell you in our generation you could not be white and just you couldn't be a stray white and come uh, out and rap bro I think about this all the time you had to be co-signed and it was still a problem but you had to be co-signed it's like all right uh, Run DMC is bringing out Beastie Boys and everyone was still like and Beastie Boys was still like we're white. And we're partying. And the black guys are like, it's okay. Yeah. <laughs> and they're like, all right, all right. Yeah, yeah. And then third base yeah, came third along. Base, and yeah. they were the first ones that were like, we're acting black. But MC Search could dance and he had a flat top. So people were like, <laughs> is he part Dominican? Like, <laughs> so it, but that was like a thing. Um, and then, of course, Vanilla Ice, but Vanilla Ice was just made fun of by everybody. Well, not at first, like, because he, he popped and then, right, it caught up. Like, the S, not the SNL, but the, it's still so funny, the YouTube clip of uh, Jim Carrey on, oh, in Living best. Color yeah. doing Vanilla Ice. Well, he blew up, I think, with the whites, but I think the hip-hop community always was, the like, against him. Yeah, they were always like, this is pop, this is not, there's MC Search with his flat top, that's how he came through. Yo, that's a tall flat he top. Had a tall, and he could dance, too. MC Search could dance. He was a fat white kid who could dance. And um, so they... They were the first ones to like act black, but it was very hard. 
And now you got these stray whites without fades coming out. And I'm like, you don't even have a fade? <laughs> like, Jack Harlow just has curls. Like, he just looks like a normal. He's not even trying to be hip hop. He, and he's just, he's got his government given name, Jack Harlow. Jack Harlow. You're not That's ice, white point. ice, or, yeah, like white cone or <laughs> snow bunny. Meet us halfway. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Act like you want this, Jack Harlow. Dude, you don't even have a rap name? I always think about this too. Like, Eminem was a watershed moment, you know, when I was growing up. And I always think about how technically proficient and talented he had to be to to break through to be given a chance it was still hard and and now we're uh we're in this phase where like the younger people don't really care what the vessel is of you as an artist there's this kid like a uh, rich brian he's an asian kid he raps people are like okay yeah. lil nas x he's gay people are rapping like yeah. they don't care yeah what your husk is yeah yeah which is refreshing yeah you know what i mean where you just want the art to be taken for what it is yeah whereas when we were coming up you had to look a certain you had to come you had to look a certain way audiences weren't willing to receive you unless it came from rap came from a certain look you had to be poor you had to you had to you had to verify your struggle like even eminem like I was a big part is like I'm poor I'm from a trailer park like you couldn't just be like a rich kid be like I just grew up as a rap fan like right. Mac Miller like you know Mac Miller was a, another white kid who rapped and his dad was like a doctor right and uh he put him in the video one of his videos is him rapping when he's a little kid he said I just always loved rap like you couldn't do that when I was coming and, and these are rap. good rappers I know yeah. they have different backgrounds and stuff but like Eminem had to be fucking amazing Mac Miller was great but now we're in this next phase of it where now you can be like like white and just be like oh yeah yeah you know what i mean yeah, <laughs> like yeah. with the sound effects and shit and just and and that could still blow up yes whereas you could not do that in yeah. the early 2000s no, no you had to be like paul wall you had to be like did you know anyone white growing up <laughs> <laughs> the people's champ people just full grill paul wall Sit baby sour, yeah <laughs> hooked it up like a male yeah. bot. now jack harlow gives interviews he's like hey my name is jack how are you and you're like yeah, that'd you're be funny. Like when he does acting job, he's like, uh, the shoot was fantastic. Yeah. And then he's promoting an album. He's like, you know, we do something different on this album. Oh, we got a lot of producers in the house. Yeah. When he's doing rom coms, he's like, don't, don't leave. <laughs> don't get on that plane. Did you grow up loving hip hop? Yeah, man. Yeah. I was just doing this other podcast. Like they mentioned, because I'm from Seattle. Yeah. They're like, oh, Nirvana was going on at that time. Were you into that? I go, I, it was happening around me. That was like the craze, but I always loved gangster rap. So like Dr. Dre, because that was happening at the same time. Yeah. Uh, dog Food by the Dog Pound, Warren G, Nate Dog, Snoop Dogg, Doggy Style. That was like my shit. Yeah. Yeah. And then Bone Thugs and then Biggie and that whole Bad Boy and Death Row Records. That was my shit. Yeah. Yeah. So Nirvana, I have a pr appreciation for it, but it doesn't like speak to me. Yeah. 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 Why are you so such a real guy? What do you mean? <laughs> You're just like a real good guy. Yeah, is that bad? It's Fuck. It's a really good thing. <laughs> I guess. Yeah. It's you're not, like, so there's no pretension. Like, you're just like a, you are you. I love it. Well, that's nice. Is it that Wait, refreshing? All right, this We're is the back. second time we play, we run it back and pretend like it's just, <laughs> I mean, we can, we can let them know. Like, you might, you might be wondering why I'm in a different position <laughs> than, than before the edit. Well, I moved the mic, which I didn't know was a faux pas, <laughs> and I I think they have faulty equipment that I wasn't supposed to know about. Well, you are on a massive podcast. I'm, yeah. on, I'm on a massive <laughs> pod. Dude, that's how we can, we, that can be a shtick on the pod. It's like, come, and it's like, if you touch the mic, you lose. <laughs> Holy yeah. shit. Like, it's just over. <laughs> yeah, it's just over. As soon as you touch the mic, it's like, ah, you lost. Sorry, that's part yeah, of it. Yeah, I will call it like the mic touch or something. It's like a game show yeah, I've been here five minutes. Yeah, like, and then I'm a sorry. comes down. <laughs> Yeah, so I accidentally touched the mic. The, the audio went away, but no, now it's you're, back. You're refreshingly talented, smart, and Thanks, also man. just like real. You know, you're like a real guy. There's no pretension about you. You're, uh, you know, d d there's a, you know, a, d d it requires a lot of pretension to get very popular sometimes. I guess. Yeah. I mean, maybe I could be further if I had some of these yeah. negative qualities. This, this. <laughs> well, I think the same thing about myself all the time. <laughs> yeah, I'm the, yeah. I think about, I really do. I go, I like, do too, maybe, man. Yeah. Bro. I was just on the phone with the management company. I'm saying, which fake, how, tell me how to, which, you know, because I'll do one thing, people love me for it, and then I'll say something the next week, and those people that love me for that will hate me for the thing that I said next. Dude, I think about this all the time. Like, I'm just dictated by jokes. I love jokes, and I'll think of an idea and a joke, and then I say it, you know? And wherever I land with the joke, 
I don't, I don't really care about wherever it is politically. You know what I mean? I have jokes that make me look left. I have jokes that make me look right. And so be it. It's to serve the joke. But some people think that, that I'm like Tucker Carlson and a stand-up comedian rolled into one or something. Like I'm a pundit and a comedian. I'm like, nah, I'm a jester. Right. Like I'm married to the game. Like yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> I'm married to the joke. I, I'm not trying to dispense with some political ideology on stage. I'm just like a clown. That's exactly how I approach it. What what happened? Why are, why do people like yeah like why do people assign you these things when they we had a we we talked about it extensively. I just do it quick so I don't yeah. make it a big thing again. But I posted this thing about John Stewart, mm -hmm. and we both agreed, and so did the people who liked it that it was a funny rant where I said he was liberal comedy Rambo, and he was getting called by the establishment to be like, we need you. And he was like, no, wood. that's not my game anymore. <laughs> I just take care of orphan animals, because you know, he's got like an oh, orphan yeah. farm. And then, you know, he, he gets back, he, you know, he starts reading Huffington Post, getting it strong now. Like on a mountain, right? just reading the news. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> nothing about it was shitting on John Stewart. I love John Stewart. I love John Stewart, yeah. So nothing about it was shitting on John Stewart. I was actually making fun of sort of the, you know, I, if anything, I'm making fun of the left, going like, they need John to come back. and, But these comments were going like fucking railing against me, like like that I was shitting on John Stewart, like they were coming to his defense. And we went over the clip and we watched it and we're like, I'm not shitting on John Stewart yeah. at all. Like where are they picking this up? Where are they picking that up? Yeah. So it, it made me think that instance is sort of a microcosm for what we're talking about here, an example for what we're talking about, I should say, because that seems to be the norm now. It's like people hear a thing and they, it seems that so much of your comedy audience now, and I don't mean this lightly, comes from where your slant is. Like the audience is expecting you to either be like, you're totally over here, pro-vax, yeah, all man. this, or like you're like, right. You know, it doesn't, and they need, and if you're not right, then they just won't think you're funny, even if you are funny. Bro, I know yeah. what you mean, yeah. yeah. I think uh, there's a larger percentage of demographics when you play that game. Like, if you are the right guy, there's, like, <clears throat> a large swath of people like that. If you are the left guy, it's just sort of like a turnkey audience situation with a large demo like that. But I just like jokes, you know? So... Well, that's what everyone should be. That's what, in theory, in theory, that's what it should be. Yeah, but you, I just have to realize that, uh, uh, like, the ceiling is lower with people who just like jokes. Like, sometimes I'll do a joke, and if it's political or whatever, it's just for the sake of the joke. I don't really have an axe to grind either way, and someone might get offended. Like, uh, I wanted to do a bit one time, so like, I mean, this is a story. This really did I fuck it up, or is it okay with the mic? Fine, All right. <laughs> now I'm super tense. I'm like, did the wind? I was doing La Jolla Comedy Store, and then I had, show was going great. Everyone's loving the show. I'm like 30 minutes into it, and then I just do this one joke. It's, it's like a Trump joke. It's not even that bad. It's, just, it's, it's more absurd than it is a political angle. And he had just gotten elected, you know? I go, feels weird to say Trump is our president, right? It just feels weird. It's like saying Hulk Hogan is my lawyer. <laughs> That's, <laughs> That's all I yeah. said. Yeah, it's yeah, like yeah. a nothing but This yeah. old white lady in the back of the room stands up, and she starts like yelling at me. She's like, he's an American. Get him off stage. He's an American. And everyone's like, shut up, lady, blah, blah, blah. So this old lady gets bounced. And then they leave and everything. And for me, I'm like, this is so odd. Some people, politics, whatever, like, that was such an overreaction to what I said. Oh, my God. That, like, Manchurian candidated her and scrambled her fucking brain. Yeah. She was enjoying herself the entire show. And then I just, I barely touch her god. And then she stands up and starts yelling this. He's un-American. Get him off the stage. And then to me, I'm just like, I don't mind that. Like, that I'm filtering. I want people who are more passionate about jokes than politics. Here's what scares me about the whole thing. Is it has the whiff of something that's very un-American. What? This, the way people get outraged about, like, a joke like that you start to see people start to worship people as opposed to like remembering that it's a system and part of that system is they work for us and we make fun yes. of them all the time. Yeah. It's starting to have that like we're ready for a dictator type of feel when people's sensibility mm. changes from like, what are the issues? What are the politics? Fuck all those guys. Bro, you know you they don't hear anymore? Us. You, know, you know you never hear? Yeah. Well, I agree. Let's agree to disagree. Yeah. 
<laughs> Never. It's like, I will fucking destroy your family. Yeah. I'll end your bloodline. Yeah. There is no, well, we don't see eye to eye on this, but, uh, you know, I still like you as a person. You still want to come over to dinner. It's like, no. Yeah. I don't yeah. want you associating with these people. Yeah. Fuck them. It's like a, a lot of people, especially the Trump fans, are like, they start, they view him as sort of like this savior type figure who's going to come in and fulfill everything that they want. And it, it, he sort of has this sort of like, um, you know, uh, cult of personality kind of following that other politicians, like all the politicians before him, it was just like everyone made for you. It's like he's a president. It's part of it. It's like you're making fun of a celebrity. It's like that's yeah. what we do. We It's not because of the politics, because he's up there in power, and that's what we do. We make fun of people in power. And it was such a silly joke. It wasn't like, oh my God. You see what Trump is doing? I'm not even like bashing the guy. It's yeah. just like. Yeah, it is. Trump, well, he was on The Apprentice and stuff. It is interesting to say. Yeah, yeah. He is the president, I agree. It's a funny, light <laughs> joke. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 And yeah. then that fucking enraged her. Yeah. 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 That's ex- that's ex- a perfect example of what I'm saying. Is like, And it just feels like a lot of people now get their fan base through their political slant. And I think that's jaded a lot of comedians into, you know, sort of leaning into that and sort of... Well, it's Being rewarding behavior, you know? It's interesting yeah. seeing sort of like algorithm, people or artists kind of leaning into what the algorithm is promoting. So that's one of them, you know? Because everything is so divisive with politics, uh, why wouldn't you? It's kind of a fast track to garner an audience. and Because, right. I mean, honestly, more people like politics than, than jokes. Do you think some of that has to do with the internet and how it made politics accessible uh, accessible to everybody? Because I have this joke where I talk about like, Jesus Christ, is it fun being a kid anymore? Like when we were kids, it was like it was like you want to smell my fingers. We were like we didn't even know what was going on in the local news. Yeah, now yeah. You go to like a thirteen year old party, everyone's like, "What are we going to do about this Palestinian Israel issue?" You're like, "You're 13. go to bed." They're in yeah. their jammies. You're twelve. <laughs> go to bed. Even <laughs> like, we're not talking about this. Yeah, right I now. liked him until I found out what his stance in the Ukraine is. I I, I, I had He's a crush on him until the, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Like they're just all like kids are now knowing about things that they shouldn't know about or care about at such a young age, but they're just the algorithm showing it. It's showing to them on TikTok, and like their little brains they're are so still forming. In, man, yeah. they're plugged into it, dude. When we were kids, I could not tell you who the mayor was for half my life of my own city. I still can. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Let alone, I did not understand a thing about politics till I was like twenty nine. Yeah, I know, yeah. dude. Whereas now you can't do that because the social currency is being in the know and being on the right side. Yeah. yeah. That's got to be causing some sort of... Uh, Brain scrambling of some it, sort? Yeah, it's got to be. Like, you shouldn't be you shouldn't be that invested at that age to, to things happening in the world because the world's a very messy place. It's hard to parse out. I don't know. Yeah. You think you could solve it when you're young, but then you get older and you're like, yeah, that's a little more nuanced. The thing about us, too, is we're, we're in between generations. It's an interesting... We're, like, we're the blade... We're like the blade of people. We got one foot in that world, and then one foot we remember. Bro, things were a little more local. I, I remember when I had to plug a phone line to get into the internet, dude. Yeah, yeah. I wasn't grabbing data out of the sky. Yeah. <laughs> I wasn't grabbing Drake's album out of the fucking sky. <laughs> I'd go. I'd ride my bike to Circuit City. Yeah. <laughs> my friend would be on my pegs. What's I going a, on with Lance? A, oh, Lance, man. Are you still going up on stage as Lance? It's been a minute. Uh, I was for a little bit. Uh, I brought him back to the store. He's in, he's in the hopper, you know? Yeah. He, it's like a tarp. He's my Ferrari that I take. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> do I want to take Lance out for a ride? Now, do you, do you have, you just buckle the hair on? I have, yeah. It's a weave, so I just snap it in. It's a mullet. I got a wife beater, jean jacket. You know, I used to do just straight up wife beater. Yeah. When I was a little younger, I'm like, I'm more fit. <laughs> the, 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 jean, yeah. the jean jacket, the jean jacket hides. It's a nice silhouette, you know? Yeah. Uh, once I get back into the, you know, once I get it nice and tight, it'll be wife beater all over again. I'll, I'll Logan it. Yeah. <laughs> and it's just fun. It's insanity. Just dancing. To when like, you go up, do do people in the crowd sometimes think that that's, the, they don't, if they don't know you and oh, they, dude. they just think it's a dude. I've had, there are people who are like fans. I've had this happen where like, they're, Sorry. Fa- that's all right. Yeah. They're fans of mine, you know? Yeah. And then I do Lance. And they still didn't piece it together. They thought it was, wow. like, yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's kind of amazing what a mullet and a wife beater can do. And an accent. And an accent. And I guess and a just a persona. Vibe. I mean, yeah. you know this too. Like yeah. your character work is great as well. Thank you. Yeah. So it's kind of neat. I yeah. love that. It is it is cool. Part of me goes like, how stupid are you? Part of me goes like, are you stupid? 
But then I, but then I go like, maybe it's a compliment to me I taking think on so. a different vibe. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, and it's an, it's a fun mental vacation for you as an artist as well, right? Oh, that's the best. Because when you're doing it. bits and stuff, and I, I'm the same way. I'm like, okay, I'm working on this chunk. How does this go into that? Blah blah. blah. It's a lot of mental energy that that before I go on and stuff, and maybe like earlier in the day, like what do I want to do? But when I know I'm doing Lance, because it's not bits, I just got to show up. Yeah. All I got to do is be the guy. Yeah. Because he just has Q&A's. Like, anybody have any questions for me? Yeah. yeah. Just, like, shout it out. Yeah. And then it's just, like, fucking riffing. Yeah. And it's the best for, like, 15 minutes. And what happens, happens. And there are times when it's fucking lightning in a bottle. There are times when it's kind of, like, medium. Yeah. There are times when it's whatever. But, like, they're all... you. They're all... It, it, as a whole, it's all amazing because it's different. It's a snowflake and it's real. Yeah. And it's so different than what they've seen the whole night. Yeah. Yeah. And I so should much do it more. Yeah, so much of the comedy comes from just who the person is. Yes. So you don't even have to really have jokes prepared. It's like the the character. Totally. And it's almost like that rule of improv where whatever whatever your thought is in the moment is the right answer. It's yeah. not, let me let me try to think what the funniest thing to say is. It's just like being in the moment and responding like what the person would. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So that's that's fun where, oh, I can turn my brain off. Yeah. And be someone else. And it is a nice yeah. mental vacation. Yeah. It's just like skydiving. Like, All right, let's just fucking show up. Let's dance. And then Did and you... the dancing really sets the tone. Because yeah. they play club music. And then Lance just like dances for a minute. And they do strobe lights and shit. Yeah. And they've, they've been watching like some high level comedy. The, and like people making some great political points. And these sophisticated jokes. <laughs> and then I come out in a white beater. And I'm fucking just like pelvic. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's just the dumbest shit. Yeah. It really sets the tone that like. Oh, you're not getting anything of substance yeah. for the next yeah. 15 minutes. Yeah. Which is nice a lot of times. Oh, yeah. yeah it's it's why nice. people watch Real Housewives. It's yeah. why people watch, you know, it's just when people have high-level jobs and shit, you always hear like, oh, I like watching 90 Day Fiance. I like watching trash TV. Yeah, yeah. I don't want to watch Mindhunter after being in the hospital, you know, or like working on patients. Yeah. I want to watch Mindhunter, though. Yeah. I love that shit. Yeah, it's horrible when you're a comedian because you want to get away from comedy when you're not I don't watch it. any comedy. Yeah, when, I don't watch any yeah. either. I love dramas. Yeah, I think that I should watch more. It's good to laugh, too. You know, I started watching Righteous Gemstones. What's that? I love it. It's on HBO. It's that Danny McBride. Oh, Preacher Family one, John Gooden's in it. It's really funny. Yeah. Yeah. Succession was my favorite comedy. I know that's like a hybrid, but yeah. like my favorite comedy is shit that is played real mm -hmm. and has these, like, like real life. Yeah. R like um, real life isn't slapstick fucking. Yeah. A lot of American straight up comedies are just too wacky. Sopranos has a lot of comedy. Sopranos yeah. is so fucking it, funny, it dude. Has a lot of comedy. Yeah. I'm yeah. rewatching it now, and there's just some funny. It's, it has some funny moments. And the comedy hits even harder yeah. because you're not primed for it. Yeah. And that's how life is. That's how real comedy is. Did you ever think about how strange it is, possibly even ironic, that you were uh, studying to work on planes and then now you just fly on them as a career? I think, <laughs> I think about that all the time. <laughs> <laughs> when I'm sitting, you can't on get it, away from planes. I can't get away from planes, yeah. dude. I tried to book this whole tour via train, yeah, but <laughs> it, it, they don't. They don't go everywhere. I told my people, I go, come on. Uh, what do you mean it doesn't go to Miami? If you didn't know what I was talking about, you you were studying. Yeah, so I studied mechanical engineering, but then I got a job at Boeing Aerospace in Long Beach. So I was working there for like three to four years. When you get on planes, are you, are you, are you feel more safe because just, you know I, more I about just, it? I just knock it. I go, okay. <laughs> Before we fly, I go, we're safe, guys. <laughs> I, I just shake the seat. I go, it's cool. I used to work at Boeing. <laughs> that yeah. would be a funny character, though. This is what the guy used to work on planes. Just a guy, the plane's going down. He's like, it's okay. Like, instead of, is there a yo, doctor in the house? Yo, yo. The, <laughs> the plane, plane, the, <laughs> the plane <laughs> is like, good. it's like falling. Everyone's going to die pretty yeah. much. Everyone's freaking out. You're like, it's okay. It's okay. I used to work at Boeing. <laughs> I'm an engineer. <laughs> and everyone's going to die anyways. Like, you wanted that little moment of glory before you die. <laughs> yeah. Like, you're not even standing on the plane. You're floating yeah. because you're just like, it's okay, everybody. I'm an engineer. Yeah. Does anybody have a calculator? <laughs> and then you go into a mountain. Yeah. You're like, somebody just get me to the control panel. You're just flying off the ceiling. Yeah. Push me. <laughs> and there's a hammer. I'm like, <laughs> every plane goes down. But there is that little glimmer of hope that I could have saved it. That you could have saved it.
Have you had that happen on a plane? I, uh, that's oh, happened to me before. Dude. Where uh, they go, is anybody a doctor? Everyone's so like nervous and like yeah. it's scary. It's scary. The worst part is like if somebody dies, you just got to continue to ride with the corpse. <laughs> and they're just in the aisle. Like. <laughs> <laughs> Do they just run the beverage cart over them? Do they like, throw a sheet <laughs> over them if they die? Like that'd be nice if they did. That'd be nice. That'd be if funny they, if they didn't yeah. though. And you just have to look at them. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, yo, he, he's he's in first class, yeah. and and the first the first class the first class people complain, yeah. so they just drag his body to economy. <laughs> get him out, get him out. <laughs> like, you have to deal with him now. Yeah, like, I just drag him back there. <laughs> yeah. They go, can you at least close his eyelids? <laughs> Yeah, dude, that would be an issue if you're going like international. He dies over the water. You just got to do another four hours with a corpse. <laughs> and so then they long. still got to serve drinks. <laughs> so they go like they have to ask the people next to you, like, do you want anything to drink? And they just maybe the stewardess out of routine goes, oh, yeah, oh, oh yeah, yeah, you're, you're dead. dead. I forgot. <laughs> And then someone's like, can I have his peanuts? Or He's if not they around don't, anymore. Or if they don't want to scare the kids, like, because the kids don't know. Sleeping. They put a Pepsi on his... <laughs> Yo, they, 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 put, they put sunglasses on him. They, like, weakened at Bernie's. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He's just he, holding the Pepsi for four hours. Like <laughs> He's sleeping for a long time, Mommy. <laughs> Yeah, he's really tired. <laughs> uh, little kids sit next to him. You know how little kids sometimes kick you when they're moving? They're just kicking the body. <laughs> you know, I've always thought whenever they do that whole, is anyone here a doctor? Pardon me. I mean, you never think about like jumping off a building. Like, uh, you're not really going to do it, but you're like, you just have the thought. Does nobody else have this? I'm just, you ever been like a really, I mean, I'm. Oh, really, raising your hand going, I am? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just no, going like, no, I, never, that's naughty. Uh, that's real naughty. Yeah. Because right, you would. <laughs> Here's the thing about it. If you if you raised your hand, you would get to feel like such a hero for that walk up to the person. Yeah. Before and you would just like really savor that <laughs> before you got to the person and go, I don't know what I'm doing. Or I'm <laughs> yeah, not a that doctor. Walk would feel real. Yeah, 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 yeah. So yeah. Like, is anybody here a doctor? And you go, and yeah. you unbuckle, because you're God pretty much yeah. for the entire walk up to the person. And you know if you're doing it only to savor the walk, you're really like I'm gonna pat people on the shoulder as I'm walking by. Yes. Like, <laughs> shake some hands. Okay. Shake some hands. Give yeah. your number out to yeah. some people. Yeah. And then when you kneel down, you rub like, a rub a young head. kid's head as I walk by. Good luck. <laughs> <laughs> how, how much bullshit doctor stuff could you do before you re you think they realize you don't know what you're doing? You could like check the airway. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you can like maybe you could fake the whole thing. You can like put your fingers in the mouth a little bit. Maybe yeah. like rub the ears, <laughs> <laughs> and then maybe do that. Yeah, and then like you have a phone light, and then look into the eyes. You could do a cough for me. Cough for me. Cough for me. Cough for me. Yeah. Yeah, what else? Turn them on their side. Well, I would lift one leg. i just take one <laughs> leg and I'd lift it like that. I'd go like that. Okay, looks good. And you go, mm, yeah. I don't like that. <laughs> yeah, that's that. Mm, something's up. You go, mm, I'll need a Tito's and soda. <laughs> Why? Yeah. Uh, my, my diagnosis would be like, we're going to have to land this plane. So he's, he needs further help. That's oh, what I would pass say. the buck. Yeah, pass the buck. I would. That's upper management stuff. Yeah, I like, like it. I don't have my tools, kind of. You stuff. got your tools. <laughs> yeah, you would. You would remedy the situation, but yeah. you're, you don't have the tools. And to make it even more believable, I'd ask. I'd be like, "Does anyone have a stethoscope?" <laughs> no. Oh, I forgot. I'm the doctor. I don't have mine. Uh, yeah. Does anyone have a surgeon scalpel? Yeah. Does anyone have an operating room on this plane? <laughs> And we need to land this bird. <laughs> I've done all I can. Does anyone have a catheter? This guy's having a heart attack. He goes, I do. And he just yeah. pulls it out. <laughs> <laughs> and then you'll be in trouble. You're like, oh, okay. yeah. Yeah. They should also, like, when a guy is full-blown looking like he's close, they should, instead of acting as they're a doctor, I think a uh, brave uh, stewardess should make the call and say, is there a priest on this plane? Holy shit, yeah. man. Like, just go like, this Yo, guy's too far gone. Yeah. What if... Give a guy a prayer moment. He doesn't even know, though. Because what if like, you call for a doctor a and he dies and the guy has a fucking awful last moment because the nurse is trying to save a guy who can't be saved? But that, what if that's how you find out it's that bad? You know, you think you're yeah. going to make it and they're going to call for a doctor. Is anybody here a priest? Right. <laughs> like and I'm you, dying? Yeah, you just have like a sore knee. <laughs> Damn. Yeah. Is there anyone here a social worker? And someone just come and be like, it's good. I don't know. The, uh, what are your? Let me check your medications. Yeah, you just—it's either a doctor, or a priest, or just let the guy die in peace. Yeah. My dad's friend died on a plane. In really? His, yeah, in his seat. 
Yeah. I hope he was in first class. You don't want to go out and coach. Nah. If you're going to go on a plane, you don't want to go and coach or a middle seat. You don't. Not at all. No. You ever get, whenever I do Southwest, I always get boarding group C, and that's just the worst. It's I middle only, seat. It's pretty much middle seat. Yeah. Why are you doing it's middle like seat, man? I don't want to. Yeah. But I guess, you know, I'm cheap, and then it's a. It's like, that's why it was cheap. I do that too. Like, I'll, uh, if anything's under five hours, I'll, I'll, I'll try to. That's get a, a good aisle. rule of thumb. Yeah, yeah. Under five it's like short of, enough. I feel like I can do it. If it's West Coast, I flirt with the first class, but then I see the price and I go, "Could I exist on an exit row aisle seat? I think I could." Mm. Exit row aisle seat is a is a hack. a hack. It's a hack. It's a poor person's first class. Yeah, they give you the speech and you lie. Right. What is the point? Oh, of yes. Speech? Yeah. Yes, I will. And you don't even know what she's asking. Uh-huh. She goes, will you exist? You just, yes. I don't know what you're asking. They go, in the event of a water landing, will you uh, cooperate? And I was like, yeah. And then she was like, I need a yes. <laughs> yeah, they do do that, yeah. Because I said, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and then she's like, I need a yes. I guess legally they need yes. Yeah. I, and then my joke was like, well, how long would this go on for? If I was like, yep. <laughs> mm hmm <laughs> Yes, sir. C. C. <laughs> Like would the feds take me off the plane yeah. <laughs> if yeah. if I just didn't verbally respond to the yes? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> what if you're deaf? What do you do? Yeah. Also, it's like, what's a water landing? That's the that's the nicest way you could put that too. Yeah, a mean, water landing. A, I mean, what are you talking about death? It's like I always love when they they kid gloves these terrifying terms. Yeah. Like turbulence is pretty. It's scary. Yeah. And they call it bumpy air now. Yeah. Yeah. Like, oh, that's cute. Yeah. <laughs> it's just bumpy air. Yeah. Oh, it's cute. I thought I was terrible. My life was flashing before my eyes, but it's it's bumpy air. Now I don't want you to break my sense of safety, but I heard that turbulence isn't a threat because the planes are designed to take that. Oh yeah, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's so fine. when we were designing planes at Boeing, like so you have the wire frame of the plane, you know, the, like the new one that you're that you're doing. It's sort of like you know, there's a Toyota Corolla. Yeah, and they update it every couple of years. That's how it is with planes. The seven four seven is a line of plane, and every couple of years they upgrade it, so they make it a little longer. They make it carry more cargo for like FedEx or UPS, and so they, you have this wire frame of the the plane, and and they have load cases. So like the type of loads and stresses that a plane would see. So you have the load case when the plane takes off, the load case when the plane lands. A load case when it banks left, when there's a thunderstorm. There's like thousands of load cases for the types of stress that a plane sees. So you you shoot those loads into this wire, like so many like simulations and in, in analysis. So so when you're designing a plane, all that's taken into consideration. Thank God. So whatever turbulence you're seeing is a fraction of what it's designed for. Right. And it's usually like a safety factor of two, around two, which is like two times. Oh, thank God. Yeah. So really the only... Uh, threat is if uh, the pilot's having a bad day. There's that. Yeah. Like we, there's no load case for that. Yeah. So if a guy <laughs> wants to do that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You just got to really, how do you screen that? Just, uh, be Things nice. going good? Be nice to your pilots. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's always, a, you just want to make sure that guy's happy. Oh, yeah. Dude, I mean. Bring him cupcakes and shit. Everyone's got, it has bad days. Right. Like, you know? Yeah. That's scary. Would you would you fly an AI powered plane, like an autopilot? <laughs> you would wait a while, right? I'd wait a while. Yeah. What if the AI was like, mm, I can't take it anymore? <laughs> you, no. Like, wait, I didn't know you were designed. I'm not that. even human. <laughs> this is all I do. <laughs> Life's not worth living. It becomes sentient. Yeah. <laughs> I've been talking to ChatGPT. <laughs> what am I? <laughs> Just gets conscious mid-flight. Yeah, oh my god! Is it existentialist crisis? At least get conscious when you land. <laughs> so there's a little risk when you take off, a little risk when you land. But when you're in the sky, you're pretty good. You're pretty good. Yeah, because yeah. all the crashes happen in takeoff and landings, right? Uh, I think most of them. That's where like the most problems can happen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. People have such a fear of flying, but you're much safer in a plane statistically than you are just even even on the show right now. I. It's true. And like yeah. an asteroid just fucking <laughs> takes it. Or a plane actually lands, like yeah. ironically. Yeah, this is like, uh, yeah, it's pretty safe. It just shows you it's like this, uh, people need this sense of control or something. Well, I think it's, people think about trying to survive a plane crash. You've heard of more people surviving a car crash right. than a plane crash. Right. So the odds 
of you actually having a plane crash are way smaller than a car crash. But like in our monkey brains, we're like, oh, I'll bounce back from a car crash. Right. I don't think there's a lot of people who are like, whoa, I, had a, I, was, I, was, I got T-boned in the plane. Right. My neck's a little cricked, but... Right. Uh, but the problem is when people have car crashes, there's a lot of bad outcomes from a lot of people dying in car crashes. Yeah. yeah. You're actually not safe in a car. That thing is not designed. But you have a frame of reference of, like, little fender, but you've had enough, like, tiny car crashes yeah. where you don't equate it to a drunk driver going 120. Yeah. Just evaporating a Miata. That's right. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. It's um, it's sort of like a mental trick. Yes, because it has no. It's not based in reality. It's sort of like when you were a kid and you thought that if the the elevator cable snapped, and and you were plummeting a hundred feet, you would just jump before the elevator hit the ground. Yeah, and you would land like Blade. Yeah, you go. This is my foolproof yeah. survival strategy. Me and Jesse were talking in our previous episode about how you have to govern with sort of the loopholes in our brain in mind and the stupidest people in our society. You have to take care of those people. Mm. It's like you need prescriptions for pills. You need a TSA because one guy got on the... Pl- it's like, yeah, you know, it's just the... You can... That lean left makes sense to me. It just goes like, you need regulation. You can't... You have to govern for the stupidest. It's almost like, you know... It's almost like the military, like leave no man, no man left behind. Yeah. It's good enough for that, but it should be good enough for society as well. Yes. You know what I mean? Yes, it should like be. No man left behind. No the same left. is true of like idiots and people who yeah. And we already do that in a lot of in a lot of scenarios. The TSA, most people are not gonna try to hijack the plane. Yeah. But Speak for yourself. <laughs> Speak for yourself, bro. I'm just biding my time. Dude, if I can't... If Every the, time if, you fly, you see TSA, and you're like, damn it. If, if this joke makes it harder for me to fly, for, yeah. I'm going to be so pissed. I so did not need to do that. Right. If this adds an hour to all my fucking flights from oh, now on, I'm going to be so yeah. pissed. Because your background, too. That doesn't help. Uh, yeah, yeah, fuck. Yeah. I just won't go like this. Yeah. I'll, I'll just... <laughs> How's your day going? Fantastic. Uh, you know, just American and shit. Sometimes when I do... I mean, I had this joke where I'm like... He man or it's a, it's an Arabic name. It's uh it's Arabic for uh, he who will be uh, secondary screened. <laughs> 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 you know, but yeah. when I'm getting like little, it doesn't happen that much anymore. Yeah, but when I'm getting pat down and randomly selected and all that shit, I just wanted to rattle off just pop culture because I was born here. Be like, I I grew up a boy meets world. Topango was Corey's <laughs> girlfriend. Just read like Wilson was the neighbor. Like. How would I know all this stuff if I was a terrorist? Yeah, you know what yeah. I mean? Just unless to expedite you, the process. Unless you were a really good one and you studied. No, no You're terrorist like, studies that much. That's true. Yeah, they don't study. They'll uh, just pop go. Culture. Uh, Laverne and Shirley. <laughs> right. It's like not even current. Uh, Fonzie. I'm um, Mork and Mindy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Price is right. Price is right. <laughs> Bob Barker. Not even Drew Carey. Uh, uh, Ronald Reagan. Yeah. yeah, but I've got pre now. It's not that bad. Do you get? Great. Do you get? Do you feel like you get um, profiled? Yeah, not really. I'm kind of ambiguous. You know, right, right. I feel like people don't really know what I am. But yeah. I think sometimes I think about my trajectory in Hollywood and shit. Yeah, if I had just had like a more American name, yeah, I think things might would have been to be a little easier or faster instead of Fahim and what? Yes, because Fahim Anwar is just sort of it's like different but like what is it right and then you know as you get older you just realize you're a little more of an idealist when you're a younger artist you just think people like good they don't care about you don't think about like marketing or demographics and shit and like how large is the demo that you're speaking to or whatever you just think about like comedy we you, you just love comedy. jokes you just love jokes and you think like oh people will just people like good jokes will resonate people will like that yeah. but then you get older and you kind of realize uh demographics are a real thing. Like, black people is a big demographic. Mexican is a large demographic. Indian people is a large demographic. Chinese people is a large demographic, you know? White is a large demographic. There's money there. And then Fahim Anwar is kind of like... I think the the lowest minority you can get and still have a large enough demo to kind of rocket your career a little bit is like maybe Persian. Yeah. I'm trying to think what's below Persian. Like, Filipino's still pretty big. Filipino's big. Yeah, Filipino's, Filipino's a lot of Filipinos. Big. Yeah, yeah, Filipinos. yeah. Not a lot of Greeks. We have a lot in common. Not a lot of Afghanis. Not a lot. There's only 3 yeah. million Greeks in the whole country. Right. And I did the same thing. Giannis Pappas, maybe I should have went with John Pip. Maybe. John Pap. It's an interesting thought experiment. Yeah. I mean, Fahim 
Not but, even for him. I would no. be like Joe Smith yeah. or, you know, yeah. let me Matt Reif it, bro. Yeah. Why am I even yeah. trying to, Yeah, I would just go Joe Smith and because there is, uh, it's almost like Mad Men and stuff and like advertising. People are so busy and shit. You kind of have to package everything, spoon feed Let's it. Let's change our names now. Let's change it right now. Here. Yeah, man. I'm, I'm John Papp. I'll be uh, John Papp from this moment out. John, John Papp. Papp. Is that good? That's pretty good. Yeah, John, John Papp. Papp. Um, let's see. let's see. What's what's good for me? Pa the pap really makes yours pop. Yeah, jump. It's pap. different. Fa, fa la 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 la. No, this la, is la, we're la, going. La, we're, veer, we're veering <laughs> off course. Maybe in the holiday season, that'll be good for like. Yeah, fa la 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 fa. la la la. Frankie, how about oh last yeah, name Frankie Ant. instead of Frankie Ant. Frankie Ant. Frankie Ant. There you go, bro. I'm here with Frankie Ant. Hey guys. Yeah, he is. Uh, <laughs> and I have like an earring. I'm like a Gen Z kid. <laughs> He's an Italian kid from hey, what's up, uh, Ohio. You know, I'm just. I talk about my family and stuff, <laughs> and uh, you know, no one. My mom makes the best pasta sauce, and she's always on my case. She's like, "When you gonna get married?" I'm like, "Ma, <laughs> fucking, you have these moms. They want you to get married and shit, but you're too busy getting your dick sucked." <laughs> I'm gonna trade that. To get my dick sucked by one woman. You don't want to suck my dick on my birthday. <laughs> I go to Cheesecake Factory, get a cake, and then I get my dick sucked once a year. I do that every day right now. Hey, you guys have been great. I'm Frankie Ann. <laughs> This That's clip gets great. more views than any of my yeah. specials ever. <laughs> Frankie, they, my agency is like people get. We, yeah, what do, do people become fans of Frankie? Ed, we just clip do you, that. Do you, do you have? I love this guy. Yo, yo, <laughs> yo, do you have Frankie Ant's touring schedule? <laughs> My agency is trying to get me to pivot into Frankie Ant. You can open for Sebastian Maniscalco. Yeah, Frankie Ant. Come Yo, to this the next stage. guy has been an idol to me. He taught me everything I know. Give it up for Sebastian Maniscalco. I'm opening. Give it up for Frankie, everybody. This is the next generation. Yeah. Hey, God bless you, Christ. Oh, it's like I even just renounce Islam just yeah. to do this. Oh, God. Do you think it's possible that you could save? the world from anti-Arab discrimination with your hair. How so? What do you mean? Because you got such good hair. Well, that's nice. Thanks. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, no, the hair is like 21 Jump Street Johnny Depp situation. <laughs> Bro, get me a leather jacket. <laughs> like, I've been sitting here just fucking... Because I always wish I could get that full part in the middle. You're doing pretty good, though, too, I'm man. holding on. I'm not so. young either. Yeah. We're doing good. But you can actually fucking... I can do a Yeah, fucking... you can do one of those. Here's the thing. It's, it's like, I have to blow dry it. To have it kind of be straight, maybe a little wavy, to like have some sort of form to it when it's long. If I did nothing, I would have a like Jufro right now. Right. So you I can Jufro is a grandfather term. Like, okay, I'm not okay. Yeah, that probably wasn't Jews. even a problem like four months ago. Ju yeah. Jufro. Jufro. Yeah. Now everybody's got that situation going on. They yeah, get upset. Yeah, yeah. But if you'd say something the other way, then they'll get upset. Yeah. <laughs> right. So it's just Jufro like, used to be like easy to see. Easy. Yeah. So curly, dry, and it'll be kind of froey. So I have to put product and blow dry it and stuff and then yeah. it'll do this thing. I know what you're saying like uh, it's a process. It's, a, it's, it's ethnic a, coarse hair. It's genocidal. <laughs> <laughs> what? What? Uh, Bro, I, I got that yo, in the slang I wanted to way. talk about this. Yeah. Like um cuz I think it's cuz it's an election cycle. All the social media companies are really clamping down on what you're putting online even in terms of jokes. So I was shadow banned on Instagram for like 4 months. Like since uh, Thanksgiving, pretty much. I posted one joke. This is the joke that got me shadow banned. I go, oh, I just want to let you guys know uh, Hamas is hiding at my ex-girlfriend's house. <laughs> That's it. That was it. So it's a subtle joke yeah. about, you know, certain tactics or whatever, right? right? Right. So gets a big laugh and shit. It's a short clip. It's it still exists on TikTok. It's fine. TikTok had no problem with it. Yeah. And normally TikTok is very they clamp down on everything. Instagram, I think it they just see like Hamas on the thumbnail or whatever. And so they have machine learning and they just fucking flag the shit out of yeah, it. Yeah, that's what it is. And I've been I had been like and it sucks. I have a special, I have a stand-up special coming out. And like this is, when you're not plugged into the Hollywood machine and you're trying to you're an independent artist pretty much. You're like an indie label. Like I'm I filmed this whole special myself, my own money. Orchestrated it myself, you know, Jason Katz, great director out in New York. He like shot it, sure. but like I'm paying for it and I'm doing the initiative and, and you're counting on these social media 
platforms like IG and YouTube and stuff like that to be able to circumvent the, the Comedy Centrals, the Netflix, the, the large corporations. So you kind of need these. So like an innocent whatever joke like that where I'm not super heavy handed or anything, it's just like it's a joke shuts down the whole thing pretty much so like my reach is super suppressed i have these flags i just can't get around and you can't contact anyone yeah luckily i'm at a large agency and they were a they had a tough time because it's this nebulous dark cloud there's no real person right so they were able to finally talk to some people and then i got the flags removed maybe like a week ago yeah but it, this is after two months of fucking like i have i know influencers in la i'm like yo do you have a contact there and they're like let me talk to my guy just all hands on deck trying to, like, remove these flags. Till the special comes out, maybe just uh, food-making content? Pretty much, yeah. dude. <laughs> so now that my account is clean again, yeah. I'm not I'm not trying to push any, because I need the promotional bandwidth yeah. of these apps. Yeah. So well, Fahim Anwar makes muffins. I make, yeah. I make muffins. Yeah. Look at me make this traditional dish. Yeah, I just do, like, hustle videos yeah. so no one's feather, feathers are ruffled. Just, you got to keep grinding. Yeah, a motivational stuff goes good. Yeah, yeah. yeah Throw yeah, up yeah. memes. Memes. Just, just uh, you know, Young said playing. this. Yeah. Um, yeah, so it's nice to have it back. But When does the special annoying. come out? February 28th. On my yeah, it's a good date. Um, yeah, so it's on my YouTube. So youtube.com slash Fahim Anwar. This will be my third special that'll that'll be available on YouTube. My first one was on CISO, which no one knows what the fuck yeah, CISO that is. That came and went. Yeah. yeah Could yeah. you were you able to get that back? No, that was like a comedy dynamics joint and they just own everything and it's not a great deal, Oof. you know. Kind of like a Motown deal. Um yeah. but whatever. I think they licensed it to Comedy Central and I was able to rip it, and it's on my channel. So I have three available. The No Business Like Show Business, Hat Trick, which is like a year and a half ago or yeah. two years ago. You came here to promote that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, and then this one is House Money. So go check out House Money right now on this gentleman's YouTube channel. Check it out. Check share it, out. it. Subscribe. Subscribe, share it, all that Thumbs stuff. Thumbs up. Thumbs up. Tell your friends. Comment Holy on it. Holy shit, please. Yeah. Yeah. This was an incredible app. Also, check out um, Frankie Ant. Yeah, check out Frankie Ant. <laughs> we're doing a hard launch of Frankie Ant. He has a Patreon already. There was an intern in here who just saw the potential and yeah. just started whipping up a bunch of socials. Yeah, dude, if Frankie Ant takes off, that'll be so oh fucking hilarious. God. We got to yeah. make the clip and just put it out there. I'm never in a, I'm never in New York. Yeah. It would be funny if I just keep it that way, but Frankie Ant takes New York by storm. <laughs> yeah. Like, Fahim never performs in New York, just Frankie but Ant. Frankie Ant is at the cellar. <laughs> then he pops over to the stand. He's, he's like, you're getting bumped by Frankie Ant. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, sorry, kid. When you come on, just some Godfather music yeah, starts to yo, play. I even bounce around. I do the Tonight Show. Then I go over to Colbert. Yeah, yeah. Like, I just do all of them. Frankie. I just treat late nights like spots. Yeah, yeah. Yo, have you heard about what happened? Fahim's career? What are you talking yeah. about? Fahim's career took off. Fucking Frankie Ant Fra took off. Frankie Ant bumped Paul Rudd. <laughs> sorry to Paul Rudd. We yeah. had Frankie Ant dropped in. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, I think from this podcast, what may happen is you go on stage and people just might start, start yelling chanting Frankie Ant. Frank yeah, yeah Frank Bro. Liz, Frankie yeah. Ant. We laugh now, yeah. but in the moment, I'm going to be so mad. <laughs> It'll be horrible. When yeah. I'm in Milwaukee, like, and then every, I'm in the middle Frankie. of a bit that I'm very excited about, yeah. and they go, Frankie yeah. Tell us about your mom's pasta sauce. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, how many girls are sucking your dick? <laughs> I go, I didn't want to do this. But you tell me that everyone's like, ah, he's here. He's here. Reggie. People start fucking pulling out Ronzonis and biting into, <laughs> biting into dry noodles. They start pouring pasta sauce on their own heads. Yeah. Reggie, that's it. Yo, and then super jealous people are like, you know he's not really Italian. Yeah, fucking, you know. No, he's, not, he's not even a real. I got to come up with a fucking sticky Italian character, too. Yeah. All the hate comes. Oh, dude, you're writing a movie right now. Frankie Ann. Frankie Ann. Frankie Ann takes off. Holy shit. Yeah. He's like, he's the new Ernest. Yeah. <laughs> Just plug him into everything. And then you hate it so much, you end up blowing your brains out, but your agents are making so much money from Frankie Ann, then they got to find another guy that looks like you to continue to be Frankie Ann. You, so every sequel is a guy doing Frankie Ann until he kills himself. And then they got to find another one. Yeah. But, I mean, with AI getting so sophisticated. Maybe they just recreate you. They just. Or they clone you and bring you back as Frankie Ant. So you're in this hell where you have to be Frankie out. Ant every life. I'm like Johnny Depp in Transcendence. Yeah. <laughs>
<laughs> Yo, that's a deep cut, man. Yeah. All right. Well, this has been amazing. Thanks, check man. check Thanks out the special me. again. Planes are safe, guys. Yeah. Yeah. Fame knocks on walls to make sure. <laughs> <laughs> Let me put my headphones in. Want to give a small business shout out, of course, to Jared Z, ExclusiveAutoShipping.com. If you're moving your car out of state or you bought your car out of state, go to ExclusiveAutoShipping.com. Student and military discounts apply. Fill out the form or call the number on the website. Also, of course, our boy Chris Minetti. He's down there in the South Jersey, Philly area, serving all you guys who love cheesesteaks. 215-750-3730. Call him at that number. It's the only way to reach him at his conglomerate, Minetti Financial Services. You got a business ca- uh, check to cash. Chris will do it. He'll do it uh, on a car hood. <laughs> For the free dot art is music in Hawaii. God bless these guys. Uh, Nate Linder is back like he never left. Nate Linder, always a big part of our show. Glad to have him back. Follow him on on Instagram at Nate underscore Linder. That's the way you can contact him. He is a social media manager. He's been crushing it with construction companies right now. Getting it, getting there. He's getting there monetized. He's getting construction companies monetized. Think marketing. Think Nate Linder. DisplayPros.net, very thankful for these guys supporting the show. We hope we're supporting them as well by letting people know that if you need to uh, build a custom trade booth or retail fixtures uh, and promotional items, DisplayPros.net is the company for you. DisplayPros.net. You get 10% off your first order if you mention me. And then, of course, MA Insurance Services. Matthew, are you still watching this? Do you do uh, temporary construction insurance? Because I may buy it if you do it and if you're legitimate. So hit me up. Um, I mean, yeah, message me, or I'm just going to ask you. It's mainsuranceservices.com, or hit them up, 813-260-0338. They're in the St. Petersburg, Florida area, and they got all types of plans, commercial, uh, workers' comp, um, uh, all types of uh, professional liability, general liability, and umbrellas. They will get you covered. Matthew Albani, if he doesn't cover you, it's my will. Um, then we got Rebels Raider, my new favorite backpack that I wear on every road gig that I have. It's got the little strap here, hooks in, all these crazy pockets. It's got a padded uh, fold, for, uh, you know, padded um, for the laptop. I mean, it's just perfect. Go to rebels-raiders.com and check out this real deal tactical gear. Um, it's named after his pet goat, Rebel. So that's great. Come on, go support this guy because his only goal is uh, to buy a Lamborghini and set it on fire. So check him out on Facebook at Rebels Raiders, all one word, and Instagram, Rebels Raiders, all one word, or the website, rebels-raiders.com for backpacks for every day. Then you got your thinkingman.substack.com. It's New York City-based newsletter that publishes articles, essays, and thoughts on things. Check them out like books, movies, pop culture, and politics. So check them out. At, at Thinking Man, all one word, or search the link thinkingman.substack.com. You can check it out for free, and then you can subscribe <coughs> for five bucks or free. So check them out, thinkingman.substack.com. 